Hey guys, Abner Miranda here. I am adjusting um, a rifle that I just installed a superlative arms gas block onto. And this is a rifle that you guys have seen before, but I've never run a superlative arms on this rifle before. And I got some in today and I wanted to, um, to test it out, so I went ahead and took the rifle apart, uh, put the gas block on, got everything back together again. And of course that means that I have to recertify my zero on my hard sights. The, the, uh, the optic typically is not going to change but the hard sights are going to change maybe by one click on um, it's usually going to be on windage because if you don't get that that uh, hand guard dead center then you're and, re and really even if you do get it pretty much dead center I mean you're always going to be just take off one way or the other so what I wanted to show you really quick I'm running PPU M193 55 grain true mil spec ammo which is what this rifle is designed for shooting and I wanted to show you this thing is is just a hair uh, tightened off I, I basically reduced the gas just a little bit off of factory but but I wanted to show you where this gun naturally dumps casings see that just putting them right there that's way 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 too hot I mean that one got chucked forward. So let's go and fix that problem right now. What you do is you take the very long gas of the, uh, the hex wrench that it comes with and you insert it into the front of the gas block and you turn clockwise and I'm gonna do major major moves in I mean like like big time I'm, I'm, I'm turning this sucker down big time each one of the turns has a very distinct click to it because they have a they have a detent in there that lets you know what you've got all right let's give it another whirl That's considerably better. Honestly, that's actually a skosh to little gas. And here's how we test that. There's one in the chamber. Oh, you know what? Here's the better way to test that. Uh, well, I'll just put it on the ground with this mag, even though it's kind of really close to the ground. Well, we'll do it. We'll do it this way. I'm putting pressure on the mag. Okay, same position. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go up just one tick because, guys, you always want a hair more gas than than not. And what I did before. Hang on a minute. Okay, and what I did before, what, and by the way guys, when you're adjusting, sometimes the wrench is gonna be down against your flash hider. Don't try to pull this out with the wrench in a stressed position. Allow it to relax and then pull it out. Because what you don't wanna do is ruin that screw. The other test is magazine on the deck with you actually leaning on the gun. Because if your gun doesn't run like this, you got a problem. You know, honestly, I want those coming around. I do, I want those coming around just a little bit more. I'm gonna pinch this off just a skosh more. When it starts getting too far back, that means that you're actually pinching off the gas flow. You want there to be enough gas in the gun so that it's coming out at three o'clock, not really so much at three and a half or four o'clock, but uh, I mean, it's on the edge, it's, it's, it's on the edge. What I was saying before was when you go to take your wrench out, if it's under load, if this is poking into your flash hider or your barrel, don't try to pull it out when the wrench is like that under load. Allow it to relax and then pull it out. Ha! 
That's too little gas. That was enough gas to get the casing out, but not enough gas to get the next casing in. So that was two clicks, guys. That's that's the beauty of this uh, of this gas block. It's got so many adjustments to it that that was. So I'm actually gonna go back up too. I am. I'm just gonna go right back up too. And there's two. And now allow the wrench to relax and then just pull it out. Yeah, I'm glad you guys got a chance to see that. Because guys, there's a difference between gassing your gun in a rest where the magazine is floating and then gassing your gun with you actually leaning on the gun. We'll do it like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's got enough juice. Cool. All right. So this gun is now gassed. Done. Now I have to verify um, although, frankly, I'm inside of that circle. I've got a 10 inch circle painted. I don't have a camera on. I've got a 10 inch circle painted, as I showed you guys at the beginning of the video, um, on this target at 100 yards, which 10 inches is definitely inside of the, uh, the center of a man's chest. And I can see it from here. All the shots are pretty much in the middle. But you know what? I'm not into good enough. So I want to verify that I'm actually hitting. And here's, here's the reason why you have to re-verify zero when you change a gas block. When you change the gas setting on the gun, you're in essence changing, well, not in essence. In fact, you are changing its dwell time, meaning how long does the bolt carrier stay in a forward position locked in battery? How much time in in that measurable period of time does it take for it to begin to rotate, unlock, and cycle to the rear. And all that equates to how much velocity you're getting out of your round down range. So, especially at 100 yards, you're gonna notice the difference. So, every time that I do anything to a gun, whether it be sights, optics, gas block, bolt carrier change, gotta go back out and I gotta re-zero, or I'm sorry, not, not re-zero. I have to verify that the zero hasn't shifted so much that I'm gonna to have to do, adjust something. Based on what I'm looking at right now, I think I'm probably okay. But I'm gonna go down range, I'm gonna paint that up, I'm gonna come back, by then the rifle should be cool enough. In fact, I need to lock it open so that it does cool. And uh, we'll do it again. And we're back from commercial. By the way guys, I should have shown you this earlier. I'll put it up on the screen. This is the insert that the Superlative Arms gas blocks come with. And this is a new insert because the previous one wasn't this detailed. Guys, this is really nice. It shows you all the, pro uh, all the procedures of how to mount the thing, how to tune the thing, and it actually shows you a diagram of overgassed, undergra uh, undergassed, optimized, hot ammo, um, acceptable when you're dealing with hot ammo. Guys, this, this is a really good insert. This is something that is necessary because, so sorry to tell you, a lot of you don't know what you're doing with guns. I'm sure I, I just offended somebody right there. But um, ask me if I care. People always ask me, how do you know what you know? You know, like, how'd you learn all that? Well, I learned all this stuff by putting case loads, pallet loads of ammo through guns over a very long period of time and building lots and lots of guns for people. And uh, in the process of all of that building, you, you just pick things up. All right. Let's verify that my red dot is still on because the gas setting has been changed. I've got three rounds in here. And people say, well... Shouldn't you be shooting five? Yeah, but I've done this so many times, I can get a decent estimate of what I'm looking at in three rounds. Oh, I love that sound. A properly gassed rifle will go kump on that last round, and it sends a frequency through the gun that just feels like a tuning fork. It's really nice. Let us see what we can see. Eh, 
Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That doesn't need any adjusting. That's good. That's is good. All right, so red dot is on. I did a mental note of what I'm looking at for the the three ouch, the three bullet hits with the uh, the red dot. So now load another three rounds in here, and I'm going to see what my hard sights are seeing. And we shall see what we can see. I guess it would actually help if I shut the optic off, right? Pumpkin on a fence post, folks. Put that 10 inch, that 10 inch circle right on the front sight post with the front sight post intruding into the bottom of that circle just a little bit as if it were a pumpkin with a flat bottom sitting on a fence post. <laughs> They're all in the middle. <laughs> That's great. All three. This and this are all like sitting dead center in that target. We're good to go. Oh, that's great. All right, so that's it, guys. That's how you do it. That's how you uh, that's how you adjust your superlative arms gas block. Look, frankly, guys, this is actually the way you do any gas block. Any gas block, any anything that you add to an AR-15 that requires tuning, this is how you tune it. You make sure your casings are landing where they need to be landing. And then you take your sweet time and you work on that gun and you do it slowly. Guys, this is my go-to rifle. This is a 16 inch, um, uh, let's see here, the 416R stainless steel, 223 wild, one and eight twist, ballistic advantage barrel, superlative arms, 0.750 gas block, mid-length gas system, 13 inch BCM MCMR handguard, um, Daniel Defense, um, hard sights, the rock and lock or whatever they call them. Um, Daniel Defense Micro T1 mount, aim point T1. Surefire X300 UB, which is the rifle, the, the Picatinny version. Um, it actually has the cross screw versus the, 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 cross, uh, the, uh, the cross block. Um, Norgon um, Ambi Mag Catch, um, Ambidextrous Battle, uh, Battle Arms Development, Ambidextrous Safety Selector. Nickel boron coated Geisley SSA, Anderson Manufacturing Lower, uh, Magpul Myad Grip, Magpul, no, I'm sorry, BCM rail, rail panels that I just painted OD green, Magpul Ladder Panels, doo -doo -doo -doo, A2 Flash Hider, um, Magpul CTR, um, old school BCM Gunfighter Charging Handle. I like the new ones, but uh, the, the Mod 4s, those are really nice guys. Get, get a Mod 4. Um, man, I think that's it. Oh, I always forget. And of course, the handy dandy uh, Tier 1 Citizen 2 point sling. Now, some of you are going to ask, why 2 point? Well, you guys know I'm an aficionado of single points, but this gun, um, because it's a go to gun, meaning this is going to be the gun that I'm going to spend hours, if not days, wearing. 2 point. You guys have heard me say it many, many times, but some, some of you just seem to think that I hate two-point slings. Guys, I don't hate two-point slings. I say this repeatedly. A single-point sling is better for pick up, go, and fight. A two-point sling goes on a gun that you're intending on getting into and wearing for an extended period of time. God bless you all. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, the upper is a BCM. It's um, it's uh, just a standard BCM M4 upper, and they're not marked because BCM uppers do not come laser marked with the BCM logo because they didn't build the gun, even though it is one of their uppers. The BCM stamping is on the front, but you're never going to find it laser etched. But it is a BCM, and it it's like butter. I love it. So, um, anyways, dynamite rifle. It is now uh, gas grade. Oh, oh, I forgot. One more thing. Nickel boron bolt carrier group from Aim Surplus. It's what I run in all of my guns. Everyone's always asking me what nickel, what bolt carrier groups to run. BCGs from Aim Surplus. 
they will serve you just fine. I've been running them for for years, for tens of thousands of rounds, zero malfunctions. If you ever actually do have a breakage, they suck it up. <laughs> they take care of it like zero, zero static guys. Dynamite. The owner of Aim Surplus is my friend Brian. Now we didn't start out as, as meaning I didn't start shopping at Aim Surplus because Brian is my friend. Brian and I became friends because I was an Aim Surplus customer. There's a story there. I've already done it before. God bless you all. Thank you for watching. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one.